Greetings and welcome, brethren. Today is a beautiful Sabbath day, and we're seeing the 6th of November, 2021. And I'm joined here with Michael all the way from Germany to the United States here. And I wanted to just quick uh, remind everyone that uh, it's the scriptures that we are in hopefully in service to and i'm hoping that uh, our listeners will be more prepared to deal with the troubles that are coming ahead michael because our world is uh greatly deceived i mean i've been deceived for a very long time and and to come to this knowledge of the truth has taken me a long time and I've had to deal with a lot of shortcomings on my end. But uh, I think that in the long run, uh, you're better off, you know, facing the facts rather than ignoring them because ignorance is not bliss on this YouTube channel. We, we do not... Uh, encourage people to ignore their history and their Bible, especially, you know, the salvation that Christ came to give us. And uh, I just wanted to just quick remind everyone that uh, it's very, very important that we do our own research and uh, take these things very seriously. So on that note, welcome, Michael. Yeah, welcome, Brett, and uh, welcome, dear brethren. And I don't know if brethren include sisters. I have you have to it tell does, me. Yes, absolutely. it does. Okay, okay. Absolutely. So now I'm fine. I was a little bit curious. <laughs> yeah, actually, I just realized that many people are not accessible to the Bible. That means we have to take another approach to get them where they actually are. And many of the so-called educated, studied, professed people, they are only in their yeah, well, let's call it the gender or so in their science, what they have studied and, and they think that, oh, yeah, everything has been uh, contradicted. The Bible is absolutely a fairy tale book because science says and science claimed. But I think that we have found out in the last sessions that science is just a product of the church and science is just a product of the so-called consensus that it has been told, which is an absolutely blatant lie, that all the scientists um, they are just having one opinion and it has been proven and we have found out that nothing has been proven except that the word of God is true and except that they all are lying because man is fallible and Satan is the father of lies and the king of deception, however you would like to name him. And this is just uh, the, the problem that people have been easily be deceived because in the world of science, one step comes after the other. And uh, first you come up with a different story of the history of the earth and you come up with a different story of the history of mankind. Then you come up with a different story and with another theory and a theory based upon a theory and another theory. And so they got along. They got along with the, the false doctrine of the heliocentric system and then they had to approach many other things they had to invent other things so that people said oh yeah this is a proof for the heliocentric earth for example gravity hmm? on a ball you could you could not uh, you would you would fall off the globe earth if there was no gra gravity and that explains everything and for me gravity is the absolute one of the biggest deceptions of all times and that's why this episode I just thought about anti-science, because if it is science of the Antichrist spread, then it's anti-science. Yeah, it is not that's science. Right. Because anti is really just another word for replacing science, replacing mm -hmm. God with a, with mm -hmm. a you know, um, <laughs> a false system of belief. Can we call it that, Michael? This uh, Romanism? Actually, their science is belief because you cannot prove it. You have to believe it. You have to believe it because you lack the methods, you lack the tools. You cannot verify their claims. Uh, they yes. got the biggest telescopes, they got the biggest laboratoriums. You see that you cannot even see the things out there. That's, let's face it, the coronavirus. You cannot see it. You have to believe it. You cannot see it. You cannot grasp it. You cannot prove it. You have to believe it. It's just a belief system. 
And I know that bacteria, for example, should be ex in existence, but things are very, very complicated because you cannot get it with your senses. Therefore, you only have to believe the people and I don't believe anybody. I just believe that God created everything which is perfect and I don't believe any uh, dogma or any doctrine because from time to time uh, they have failed. For thousands of years people thought about the Ptolemaic system and then they thought they think about since uh, 1533, 34, they think about uh, or 43, I think about the Copernican system since almost 500 years. So you see that 500 years, it's a very long time. But maybe in uh, 10 years or 20 years, they come up with another uh, theory. And all the people who have believed in the Copernican system or in the Ptolemaic system or in this or in that will be proven wrong. Although universities and schools and professors and teachers have learned that it's the, it's the absolute truth of their time, but it's not absolute, it's just a doctrine. The doctrine to put the people away from the Bible. So what do you need? You need a universe which is uh, spinning, you need uh, the earth which is spinning, you need a system which you then uh, call the solar system because the sun is uh, uh, supposed to be still, it is always in deception and always in comparison to the Bible, it has to be the opposite. And so they come up with all their doctrines, with all their wrong theories about evolution, gravity, and what else do we got? Oh, there is plenty of things to come. So welcome to anti-science, or what is it in the King James Bible, Brad? Science so-called. Science so-called. Yeah, this is Timothy, Brad. Mm -hmm. Yes, and 1 Timothy 6.20 reads, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings in opposition of science falsely so-called. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Science forces the cloud, and we know that it's this gnosis. If we look at would, would we would look it up on the eSort software, which I can highly recommend. That's the eSort software. You will find that it's gnosis. So it's a uh, it's agnostic teaching. Okay. So to blind someone with science, you know that's uh, it's to confuse, and Satan is the confuser to confuse by the use of big words and complex explanations. Science so-called, that was First Timothy. For example, people intend to tell you that you have to think of the universe as not uh, a fixed place, but it is expanding, the expanding universe, uh, and that should be or has been proven with the so-called red, red shift so that you know that all oh, these objects if you got a red shift we can look it up on wikipedia um you see that is just a moving and expanding uh, universe so red shift um what is red shift european space agency tells you quote ever since 1929 when edwin hubble discovered that the universe is expanding we have known that most other galaxies are moving away from us. Light from these galaxies is shifted to longer, and this means redder wavelength. In other words, it is red shifted. Mm -hmm. So that is their official explanation. Oh, Michael, can can I comment on that for a second? <laughs> Every time. You know, it's interesting they say universe because we know what universal is. Yeah, Catholicism is expanding. It's just that they're not telling you that, you know, it's uh, um, you can look at this in in terms of, uh, you know, uh, a religious kind of uh, aspect. And um, yeah. And who who is the uh, the red aspect here? Is that uh, the, the dragon? Uh, is it? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, I tend to read into this as in a different way, but uh, yeah, we got the Hubble telescope and all that, don't we, Michael? This is 
it's no, strange. No, no. Stuff. no, no, no. You have been told that there is a Hubble telescope. You see, we, we have to be very careful. We have been told there is a Hubble telescope. We have been told that this redshift allegedly proves that the Earth, or at least the universe, is expanding. Not the Earth, of course, but the universe would should be expanding. Right. But it's all a belief system because you see that it's, there is no consensus in science. The only consensus in science is that whoever gives the money uh, gets the appropriate quotes and researches, etc., and prices. Oh, from oh, Michael, I I just want to read something in scripture just for a moment, and this is out of a study that I was doing some months ago on uh, the book of Isaiah. And, uh, you know, this is this is a passage of scripture that's hit me really hard. Isaiah 45, 18, Michael. And um, I think this is the perfect opportunity to share this scripture as long as we're dealing with um, this science topic. Isaiah 45, 18. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he established it, he created it not in vain, he formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. I have not spoke, I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob. Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come, draw near together, that ye that are escaped of the nations, they have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. And this really hit me. Uh, some months ago when I came across it because I was doing some Bible searches in, along the lines of Israel because, you know, uh, Tom and Yerk are doing their sessions on, on Israel there on, uh, you know, Yerk Lisman's Juggler 66 channel. And uh, it just got me thinking, uh, you know, we, we really ought to think about more about what the Bible has to say about Israel because it's spiritual Israel today. It's no longer a physical Israel. And I think it it really will hit a person really hard when they realize that there is no way they can know who is of Israel and who is not because that is the Lord's. It's his knowledge. It's not even ours. So Oftentimes we judge others or make mistakes and uh, end up uh, paying for it later in ways that we don't really um, recognize at times, let's just say. And um, yeah, I think it's really important that uh, we realize that uh, we should be escaped of the nations. We shouldn't be serving the nations. We shouldn't be paying attention to their silly laws and well we have to pay attention to their laws but i mean we don't need to obey all of their laws when they are out of the realm of you know where christ resides which can be rather tricky at times take for instance these mandates where does a mandate come from it comes from the pope Oh, I talk, I talk too soon, Michael. You have to study for yourself, but I've come to the conclusion that we don't need to obey the Pope, Michael. Hmm. Yeah, the Pope's got his own observatorium. <laughs> yeah. 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 And they mm -hmm. uh, give it a really strange name, don't they? Mm, not of the observer. We, we will come to that in a few sessions from now, maybe in 10 sessions or 12, I don't know. But uh, it's it's not the thing that you uh, think it is. Uh, actually, you will be very surprised. You will be very surprised how everything will, will turn out. But it's, it's, it's they control the science. 
They control the science, they control the money, therefore they control the science, they control the economy, they control everything by money. Also by doctrine, of course, but by money. You cannot research, you cannot uh, work as a scientist, as a researcher, if you don't have money to uh, buy something to eat and to drink. Yeah, You see that you're always depending, in this world, you're always depending on materialistic things and needs. So thank you very much for that uh, precious Bible verse, especially it, it, it's, it's therefore very fitting because it has been said here in the verse 18, God created the heavens and not uh, evolution, Big Bang or something like this that will come later up. God himself formed the earth and made it. He had established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. And also it's been said that this firmament is fixed. Yeah, it is fixed. God called the firmament heaven. Um, what is a firmament? Firmament means from Latin firmamentum, a support, a strengthening from firmus, strong, steadfast, enduring. It doesn't speak about an expanding universe. And it also doesn't speak about a flying earth or something like this. Yeah, so to make firm or solid. Yeah, so that is not in any kind, case, shape or form flexible, but it is solid. It's a firmament. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. And all these so-called, we uh, I got into this, where was it uh, here, Redshift, expanding the universe. You see, this is all just, this is from Hubble, and this is all, this is the same baloney as the Big Bang Theory. It has nothing to, nothing to be worth discussing even, because it is just a theory. Yeah, because it is still a theory, Big Bang, because nobody was there to record anything. It is, if you like to say so, it is not historical because nobody was there to have some record, scroll, book, something like that. No witnesses, nothing. It is just another belief system. It is not science because you cannot prove it. You cannot prove it. We have to rely on the scientists. Yeah. yeah so that's true. And the, the uh, agnostics will always, always, always turn it around and say you cannot prove God exists. See, that's how this works, you know, with with faith, Michael, you know, the 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 natural faith, the natural man in the Bible. And uh, yeah, just just search that sometime, dear listener, and study it on your own. We got a cause. Why, we got a cause why God built everything and created mankind. So, but tell me then, please, on the other hand, what was the cause and what is the reason why the galaxy came out of nothing with a big bam and expanding rapidly? Yeah, you, I don't see any logical conclusion why it should be. Just the galaxy had a bad day, has a man on Monday morning, nothing else to do but to big, have a big bang and to create anything out of nothing. Now you see, you see that they try to tell you with their signs that you are just a piece of shit, that you are just a piece of oh, right. Because what they're doing is they're making the Earth into a planet, just like billions and billions of other planets in our mm -hmm. solar galaxy, mm -hmm. whatever universe. And we can go hop to one and another and we can do all kinds of fancy uh Time travel and all this garbage. I don't buy it, Michael. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to buy it. Just the problem is that these people have been educated, indoctrinated in the school system. The school system is teaching people things they cannot prove. Right. It's just a studiorum. It is just an assumption of theories. One theory, theory after the other. Evolution, Big Bang, string. What else you will come up? You see redshift. It's 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 it, it just all looks very fancy. They blind yeah, you. Yeah. How science. about how about uh, casistry and sophistry, Michael? Yeah. This is just one example. This is just one example. Wandering planet. Yes, a planet means wandering star. My my my. Yeah, but you don't have you, many people don't know that because they spent their time actually on other subjects. They know who who won the World Cup in 1968. They know uh, who defeated Muhammad Ali. They know when uh, Frank Sinatra died. You see that many the, the majority of people are just into superficial things. They don't 
they, they don't care for truth. They don't care. You see that you just have no, in, in no way, any... Well, it's even worse than that, Michael, because young children get indoctrinated with this, whether they want it or not. They don't have a choice. They see their parents growing up and, and you know, they're, they see them writing checks, you know, to pay bills and they think, well, there's money everywhere and we have all kinds of money. So there's nothing to worry about and blah, blah, blah. Right. Mm -hmm. So you get, you know, Greta Thunberg, blah, blah, blah. And then you get politicians, blah, blah, blah. And look at what we have right now. Wow. What a whopping mess. Wow. Look at this. Isn't that convincing? Wow. A tube space and time and uh, scientific evidence yeah it's just garbage man yeah we know that it's garbage but 98 or 99 percent of the people actually they buy that garbage because because they know that 98 or 99 percent of the people have bought the garbage before and this is just the majority of people they are sheep are looking also uh, for uh, the leading sheep or the, the leader or what else they don't look for truth they just look for somebody who says okay this is correct and that's not correct yeah so that they don't have to research it on their own because they just want to spend their time in front of television in front of a vision yeah in front of a lying vision in front of uh, or, or together with other people that don't want to research because it's just boring it takes time and you're out on your own of course well isn't that interesting in that scripture we just read that uh you know it says that uh the lord created the heavens and god himself that formed the earth made it he established it he created it not in vain Mm -hmm. Not in vain. And here he says, seek ye me in vain. It says, uh, I'm sorry. I said not. I said not unto the seed of Jacob. Seek ye me in vain. And look what we have. Seek me in vain today. It's called television. Yes. And then the interesting part actually is that people prefer to be in this world full of lies, telling you that you have been. Uh, it's a wicked the, thing. I mean, these, look at God is speaking of righteousness in the scripture. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare the things that are right. But what do we have? No, no, no. You see this constant? Satan speaks wickedness and declares the things that are wrong. That's what's going on here. And you see, I'm constantly bombarded with bombarded with distraction here. I cannot read even one article uh, before another ad is popping up. <laughs> yeah, wow. that's the, that's the goal. You see, that all looks very fancy, but it has not, nothing to do with the truth. And that's that's the real problem with it. You see, if you're really researching things, then you come down to the conclusion that nothing can be oh, proved. And not only e that, but they keep upping the ante, Michael. It's 4K video, and now it's 6K, and then tomorrow it's 8K, and then we have 12K and 16. Oh, the further you go, the more it takes, and the, the more information just gets slammed into your brain, and look at how pretty it is. Yeah, it's it's really pretty. What does that remind you of, Michael? Genesis? No, it's just, three, it's just it? quantity, quantity over quality. You see that that's a problem with these people who are, don't have any arguments, but just arguing that, oh, the majority of people and it has been proven, has been taught in all the universities, has been stated as a fact for hundreds of years, etc., etc. But there is no consensus. It is no consensus in the virus thing. It is no consensus in the climate change. It is not a consensus in science in general. And that's the thing. If there would be, there would not be any changes, there would not be any new discoveries. You see that only the new discoveries will be accepted, who are, would then be in line with the theories mentioned before. So that they have to, they will look for the appropriate scientific research, for the appropriate scientific uh, people. And uh, yeah, then when a new theory is coming up, which actually, actually serves to the Catholic Church or serves their scientists, um, then they will be published and they will get rewards and Nobel Prizes, etc. That's that's the thing. 
For example, here this Carl Sagan, which is, I think, an American uh, broadcast, a very popular author in the 20th century. Um, he is not into the Bible at all, but uh, I have just uh, stumbled upon the fact that he was uh, telling in one of his series, a tribute to Halton Arpo proved Hubble correct about the redshift not always relating to the DOP. So there are certain other theories that, that has to do with the uh, frequency change and, and everything else. And actually, nobody knows a thing. Yeah, but the one who comes up with the most brilliant example or the brilliant explanation, which says, it does not say anything about the truth, but comes up with the most brilliant explanation, um, he gets a reward. It's just a bunch of theories. That's it. That I wanted to point out that this is not truth. Yeah? Even Carl Sagan had to admit, quote, there is nevertheless a nagging suspicion among some astronomers that all may not be right with the deduction from the redshift of galaxies via the Doppler effect that the universe is expanding. Oh, there is not a consensus. Not all do agree. Oh, but you see that that was last century, of course. No? In this century, everything has been proven and uh, everybody agrees. You see, this is a new normal. Uh, don't question the authorities. Hmm? Don't question. Yeah, the problem is here that uh, the famous uh, and of course infamous at the same time because he's got much truth in this uh, Swiss historian uh, Dr. Daniele Ganza said also that Wikipedia is no democracy and has no structure of right that the, the rules apply to everybody uh, because it is just uh, an administered thing. It has nothing to do with a democratic uh, thing, but it's a patronage system, which means there are a few big players in it who decide what to print and what to point out on Wikipedia and what not. That's the problem. Yeah, men think they are being free, but they are being enslaved by doctrines, not only by government legislation, but also by doctrine, by spiritual doctrines in their head, that they believe things they have learned in the kindergarten, in the school, later on in the universities, and then being seen as regular truth in society since hundreds of years. Yeah, that's very true, Michael. Very, very true. And, and this is kind of where we get to, you know, really try and emphasize to our listeners that uh, the Sabbath does make a difference. Taking a rest on the seventh day does make a difference because the Lord hallowed it in his law in the old covenant that transferred right over to the new. And if we observe that, we can take the time and do those those things on our day of rest, we can we can really look deeper into uh, why we're in such trouble, Michael. Yeah, but a man who chooses safety and security is a slave no matter how much money he has. So material things won't get you uh, spiritual freedom or spiritual truth. It is just another, it, it just totally yeah, well, totally. right, because the spirit is in conflict with the flesh and the flesh is in conflict with the spirit. Yeah, but the thing is, the, 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 the problem actually is that the, the science has to be founded, it has to be in financed, and so, and so science, it's not, it's not a spiritual dimension. Science is always a financial matter, so then right. science is very much dependent on, on the state and the people who are funding it. So you get the, you, the politicians get the answer from the scientists, they demand it, because the scientists, they work for the government most of the times. There are very few so-called independent researchers like us, for example, because we do not get money from the state or from the university for some kind of research or from some kind of book or something else. And that's the problem, actually. So, so you get your scientific reward in terms of fame, fortune and prices. And on the other hand, the politicians, governments and companies, they get the reward that they get the studies they need to fulfill their doctrine. You will always find some scientists who will prove your theory. Or 
he uh, claims to prove his theory. That's the that's the nitty gritty of it all. The, there is no independent researcher. They are all bound in hierarchy. They are bound in government, state, non-government organ organizations, etc. But they are being financed and founded. That's a problem. On the other hand, uh, I have come across uh, an interesting uh, alleged ex-KGB agent, Soviet agent named Yuri Betsminov, who this is uh, just promotion, who warns America, but it is just uh, that uh, was a very interesting thought I, I got. And he says the first step is the demoralization. You need between 50 to 20 years to totally demoralize a nation and i said okay well 50 to 20 years is the average education the average uh, lifespan of somebody who's been educated and indoctrinated in the system so if you got one generation of people from the kindergarten to school to university you need about uh, 20 years yeah so from five years to 25 years and then you stuff all the uh, anti-biblical gnosis science into them and tell them that it's the truth and you have to re, uh, record it by memory and there you, therefore you get good grades. has nothing to do with the truth, but you have to function in the Antichrist system. And so that when you have learned it for about 20 years, yeah, you actually believe it. It's the same as, for example, it's the same as the Jesuitical, um, help me out, Brett, on this, uh, mm -hmm. not not Jesuitical exercises where they take their apprentices and they are, uh, educate them for about 20 years for uh, being at the last level. So you get the indoctrination for 20 years also in a school system, which is also a kind of a Jesuitical uh, indoctrination in the school yeah, system. Yeah, the Ignatius Loyola spiritual exercises. Yeah, but this is not a spiritual exercises that you concentrate on something. This is just to function in that world outside so that you don't question anything because it is a consensus. It has been approved that this is the truth about the big man, etc. That it all comes down to Jesuitical anti-science, anti means against the Bible, uh, from at least 1599, raise your story, and it, and it started, we know that much more earlier, about 50 years earlier, in Portugal, for example, and you see that more for about 500 years, people are being Jesuitically indoctrinated without even knowing it. Well, and that's the thing where the spiritual exercises come in, because that's brainwashing. Yeah. But you will get rewarded by that brainwashing. The better your brain is washed and you are functioning for the state and government and their total doctrine of more money biblical make, yeah. doctrine. Yeah, you will get rewarded. You will get fame, prizes and a good position and maybe, uh, yeah, some other uh, awards. Yeah, so that that's my that's my point, actually. Yeah. And it has been asked why you need uh, that much uh, amount of years. And he said, OK, this is the minimal time span which is needed to educate or indoctrinate a generation of students. And he's absolutely right. This is for another thing. This is a political thing here, yeah? But it would also apply for science and apply for school system and school education in general, of course. That's it. And so your children get another education than you got because the truth is always changing. And, and language is changing, everything is changing. And so they think they are much smarter than their parents. They don't get that they got it just another doctrine also to spread uh, fear and uh, diversion uh, between youngsters and elders. So this is all indoctrination. This is learning against learning. This is Medici learning. That's what they all do. And people don't get it because they think, oh yeah, all my friends in schools, they think, they think the same way. Nobody's uh, telling about this stupid old Bible, for example. And what is the outcome? The outcome is when you look at the Bible, um, you are uh, made in the image of God. Yeah, okay. Made in the image of God. Yeah. Yeah. You can have eternal life. Yeah. You got a purpose in life to serve others. So and then, yeah, now you compare that with uh, with the Gnostic system. Yeah. Um, you are a successor of apes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Only live once. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, except you are James Bond, you only live twice. Yeah. And your only purpose is you, as you are pure matter, just uh, do what thou wilt, do what thou wilt. Yeah. Just uh, the fun generation, okay, in general, the fun generation. Yeah. So you are on a fixed earth. Yeah, you're just on this on a spinning planet. Yeah, not important or unimportant. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Yeah. So you compare that. Yeah, you people prefer to be successors of apes who only live once, who are just, just simply dumb and deaf matter, and they just have to have fun and nothing else is important. Yeah. So that's what they actually prefer in spite of being actually made in the image of God, having eternal life, having to serve a purpose on earth and living in a perfect environment. Yeah, they choose to just be successors of apes, being dumped down and being just on this earth just once and just being foolish and, and have fun no matter what. Yeah, and you, you talk about intelligence. Oh, you got to put down preach the gospel under mm -hmm. fixed earth. And what's the opposite of preaching the gospel, Mike? Gospel would be, sorry, would be Mark uh, 1615. Uh, preaching the gospel. No, just uh, be. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you, it's easy. Exterminating yeah. the heretics. Yeah. Yeah. People prefer to be seen as a successor of apes. A stupid kettle or what else you like like to, to name it. It's unbelievable, but that, that's what the school system is telling them, that you are not important, you ha only have to function. You are just a brainless machine, just want to have some fun on your, on, on your fleshly body. Yeah, Drink, eat, fornicate, sleep, what, what else you would like to do, because you only have this life. And that's what they all, or the majority of them, believe. Isn't that very, very sad? Yeah. Roger Mano once said uh, that the occult is introducing things, for example, hypnosis, etc., as a new science, and he's absolutely correct. We did that on that Greece episode, and not only hypnosis, but also other things that meditation stuff, for example, and all the other things. So this is just uh, to promote things which actually are harming people as a new science. Yeah, so everything which is pro-life it has to get rid of in the in the satanic world. For example, this uh, mother or this woman here, which is breastfeeding a young baby here, or at least a young child. Um, the poster here says in German Zukunft or Klima killer, which means future or climate killer. So that means that the baby is either the future or is a climate killer. And we got also, we got high school teachers here in Germany who openly were promoting that they just want to have no kids to save the climate. Yeah. It's and what do we think there is that checkerboard floor in the background there, Michael? Oh, this is just, I think it's a railway station or something like this. Now, this is an open, this is Masonic. an open. <laughs> yeah, this is an open column here, which is uh, meant as an advertisement for uh, documentaries on uh, art channel in Europe or in, in Germany. Okay, so that's a problem that uh, the rulers know that the masses have never thirsted after truth because truth is Jesus Christ. So the masses have never thirsted after Jesus Christ. They turn aside from evidence of they turn of, we can we can do it in, in, in Bible speech. Uh, the masses have never thirsted after Jesus Christ. They turn aside from the Bible, uh, which is not to their taste, preferring to deify Satan if Satan seduces them. Whoever can supply them with illusions is easily their master. Whoever attempts to destroy their illusions is always their victim. And now you can explain you can exchange or replace illusions also with science. Whoever can supply them with science is easily their master. 
whoever attempts to destroy their science is always their victim. This is Gustav Le Bon, Psychology of the Masses. And after school, the deception goes on. It's not only Pink Floyd here, but it's just that, uh, yeah, you're just uh, coming down from apes and you've been uh, kept busy with Rubik's Cubes and with UFOs and uh, just have fun and don't think about anything because you uh, or the DNA yeah, strand here and the brain and uh, just the, you, you are busy at your entire life, but you're being fed with useless information called indoctrination. Yeah. And also you you are also um, feeding the system with money. That's uh, very interesting. There are very, very few books where you can look things up. Uh, one example would be Alberto Martinez, History of Science. I don't have had the time yet to read that book. I think it would be a very interesting read. Um, a quote here of Jeremy Gray, the Open University is, quote, Martinez refutes several well-established myths and misunderstandings in the history of science. This is at once a work of sordid scholarship and an education in how to do history of science, and it can be read with pleasure and excitement by anyone who cares about the place of science in the modern world, unquote. Once again, I haven't read that book. I cannot recommend it. I think it is it's very interesting to look at uh, other things that various myths about history of science, because as we have known from Galileo, for example, uh, there are many, many things uh, which are not true, which has, which are believed by the majority of people. So I would really like to have a, a read in that book, for example. Yeah, And I know that he's done also uh, videos about the subject. This is Lies and Truth in the History of Science. Alberto Martin is a professor, Department of History at the University of Texas at Austin. Yeah, we know all, please, that he's one, one guy uh, playing in the system. But I just wanted to have some interesting things that people who are actually maybe coming from science have also sources of a different approach. Yeah, so I would... Uh, I would uh, just like to hand over without any uh, recommendation uh, things like this that you can can study the things if there were so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you see that every time I come across to um, to 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 science in general, I come across the church, which is the most prominent and the most wealthy institution who is promoting science. Yeah, you, yeah, we have we have studied last time that uh, even I think it was uh, Riccioli who said uh, that uh, the scriptures had to be adjusted when science when there is a scientific proof. Oh, you must imagine that. You must imagine that sentence. Yeah. So let's face it. This world is full of lies. We have been talked about the theory of gravity, that uh, oh, there is, if there is an object which is uh, heavier, uh, that this will attract uh, smaller objects. So they can ex explain, if they have a theory, they can explain how the scholar, oh, my, 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 how they, they can explain how the solar system actually works with all the different uh, planets and all the different movements. Yeah. And there's also a thing called anti-gravity. Yeah. A non-gravitational field, a hypothetical phenomenon of creating a place or object that is free from the force of gravity. Yeah. You see that gravity cannot be explained well and it cannot be proven also. It is just a theory which has to be fitted or uh, is fitting into the geosystical worldview of a heliocentric system where just everything is flying around uh, the sun, which of course is the symbol of the Jesuits and the symbol of the Catholic Church. Yeah. But there are other things to determine, for example, electromagnetic fields. So they try to think about the secret of the Almighty God, how everything has been connected and how everything was created and it will never get it because God will not, not allow it. <laughs> yeah, so it's just the snake, it's just Satan who comes up with many deceptions and uh, yeah, you got a century of this, you got a century of that and at the current time we are still thinking that the theory of 
relativity of Albert Einstein is correct, although it has been named a theory, as, as well as the theory of evolution, as well as the theory of gravitation, as well as the theory of the of the moving universe, as well, as well, as well, as well, as well, and as well. And I hope I haven't forgotten anything. The possibility of, this is Wikipedia, huh? the possibility of creating anti-gravity depends upon a complete understanding and description of gravity. Yeah, this is very interesting because nobody gets that. Even Isaac Newton didn't got it. He tried to explain it with his apple. Yeah, why an apple? Yeah, because with an apple, this is common belief, this is not biblical belief, but with common belief, an apple was the item uh, where uh, Satan deceives mankind. And once again, you have the same uh, artifact here with the Isaac Newton and his apple. It's the same symbol. It's Isaac Newton with his famous apple. It's a legend. Yeah, even that is not uh, just a theory. Legend has it. Yeah. Once again, nationalgeographic.org says legend has it. Who he was. Uh -huh. It looks still looks like kind of a brother of Rod Stewart to me. Yeah, but you see that legend has it. Legend has it that Newton formulated gravitation, gravitational theory in 1665, or in 1666. Who knows? Hmm? After watching an apple fall and asking why the apple fell straight down rather than sideways or even upward, how hard can it be? Hmm? How hard can it be? Yeah, but legend has it. Yeah, so legend has it and you will not never have a complete understanding of gravity because once again, I say that gravity does not exist. There are just other forces and other explanations, but it has not to do with gravity. No. Such as general relativity and interaction with other physical theories. So one theory can only be proven if you have an interaction with another theory, such as general relativity and quantum mechanics. As of 2021, physicists have yet to discover a quantum theory of gravity. I found in a, in a German forum, I found an interesting article. I will read it to you. It's just from a from a guy calling himself Libertino. Okay. Yeah. It's just see that the electric universe, plasma physicists, electro uh, mechanics, gravity, uh, magnetism. You got much a bunch of uh, things, and sometimes I've stumbled upon a fellow who can think straight, and this is one of the very very few occasions. Okay. I have retranslated into English. We are told that space is a vacuum. We are also told that rockets after launching from Earth enter weightlessness at some magic point. First, it is physically impossible to develop thrust in a vacuum because there is nothing to push off from. There, the legend of space travel already collapses. Oh yeah, I know this is for the future upcoming NASA uh, space uh, travel session. Secondly, up to this magic limit, everything would immediately fall back down to Earth if there is no further propulsion. But as soon as one has overcome this point, then there is no more propulsion. Why doesn't the rocket fall back to the Earth? Or because of the hypothetical gravity? What is gravity? The physicists say themselves they can neither understand it nor measure it. They say they can predict it, however reliable. This is true magic. You see, magic is a belief system. Huh? It is a pagan religious cult. Every child can reliably predict that objects fall from the top to the bottom. What a child can say, but an educated and thinking adult can, that it depends on the density of the different objects. So a balloon filled with helium or hot air rises, but one filled with air sinks. A penny thrown into the ocean makes it sink immediately to the bottom, but huge container ship, aircraft carriers also made of metal only billions of times heavier, they are not pulled to the bottom of the ocean by the this magic force of gravity. And this, although the Freemason physicists say that gravitation should have a stronger effect on larger objects. 
Where does the term gravitation actually come from? What is the meaning of the word? You must be familiar with the term engraving. This is the carving or engraving or writing of symbols, either in metal or in stone. Gravitation is therefore the art of the stonemasons, and in English the Freemasons are called the Freemasons. I don't follow the path with the Freemasons here, but I follow the explanation of density. I don't follow the path of gravitation. Absolutely not. And people have contradicted this argument and said, oh, no, 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 there is a, a force uh, pro and a force contra, anti-force and so anti-gravity, etc. And he replied once again. The principle of recoil is trust. What if the rocket, what is the rocket supposed to repel from if there is nothing up there according to the official explanation? Or do you seriously want to claim that a rocket in 5, 10, 20, 80 kilometers high does not repel itself from the air under it, but still from the Earth's surface? Then the simplest logic and physics seem to be unknown to you despite your studies. But I can understand it because you learned lies at apparent truth in your studies, just as the doctors were brought in line by Rockefeller's lies during their medical study, and that's why they go along with the whole circus nowadays. And the whole circus nowadays is not only the Foucault pendulum, but also gravity. There is a certain Eric Lathwaite and has a part or a big part of anti-gravity, anti-gravity, hidden science, set on symbolism, etc. There is a link, there's a PDF, etc. And there are many, many videos of him that uh, there are many, many, many strange artifacts which cannot explain by gravity or they actually defy gravity. But uh, it has been said that this is a major or fundamental force in our so-called solar system. Yeah? Solar system. I have to look it up where it is. Mm. Ah, there it was, yeah. So meet Eric Lathwaite, a professor who gives a demonstration of a large gyro wheel. So you see that the gyroscope, for example, was been placed in uh, World War II rockets so that they can function and they can uh, hit the target properly, etc. So Professor Eric Lathwaite, former professor of heavy electrical engineering at Imperial College London, shows what happens when a very heavy wheel is spun to 2,500 rotations per minute, recorded in 1983. Eric Lathwaite in 1983 in his 60s literally lifts, in his 60s, no, so more than 60 years old, literally lifts a 40 pound weight like a feather and with no centripetal force or angular momentum and just guides the heavy weight in the direction it already decided to go. <laughs> WTF is going on. This is unbelievable. No? This is unbelievable. Literary proof of anti gravity. Please ignore every mainstream science explanation of what this brilliant man just did in that video. Lifting 40 pounds with no effort is near impossible for anyone, much less an old man. Use your brains, people. Use your brains. Also know that he guides the gyroscope spinning wheel in the direction it wants to go. In example, in the direction of its precession, he essentially applies a force in that direction, which somehow causes the gyroscope to want to lift upwards. What sorcery is this? Yeah. You see, we can get lost in all the so-called science, but there is also some things. Some things are there which are proving us that there are some things going on which is not the debate of the scientists because they, we have been bombarded with gravity since 350 years from, for example, Isaac Newton and others. Here is an example of an Olympic hammer throw, which involves throwing a heavy ball, high inertia, by rotating around very fast to build up high angular momentum. This generates a large centripetal force, so it requires a super strong athlete. Now you know all what, just, uh, what he's talking about.
Eric Lathwaite's essentially proves that the spinning object's precession has no or very little angular momentum, inertia, or centripetal force. Amazing. So I'm not the doctor of physicists here, so that uh, I cannot uh, I cannot argue about this. Uh, but uh, next time you go to the gym, go and arm curl 40 pounds if you can, much less casually twirl around your head and when you are 16 plus years old. Huh? So you have a hard time making a bicep workout with the 50 pound dumbbell, but a 60 plus year old guy can easily move a 40 pound object around his head or over his head actually. Yeah. I couldn't find a 40 pound dumbbell curl video, but this 50 pound curl video is good enough. Imagine spinning the weights. So it seems there is not something to it and it's not the gravity. So this is the Royal Institution where science lives here. Oh, science is a living thing. I never knew that. Lecture for the Jabberwock. In this lecture, Lathwaite uses the behavior. Oh, I have to make it a little bit more readable here. Lathwaite uses the behavioral gyroscopes in an attempt to challenge the validity of Newton's laws of motion and the laws of thermodynamics. This proved extremely controversial and the vast majority of the scientific community did not accept his interpretation of gyroscopic behavior. Mm -hmm. 1974. So I found that also very interesting. There are some people who are not officially promoted uh, what you can find in, on the internet that there is something to it which is not according to the official indoctrination system. Mm -hmm. There you have it, folks. The same pathetic scientific community that haven't spoken out about the stupidity of aluminium planes slicing through steel at abnormal speeds and turning seven buildings into superfine dust in midair, leaving very little rubble or seismic impact on September 11, have also been covering up one of the most bombshell irrefutable experimental proof of gyroscopes defying our man-made laws of notion. No. defying our man-made so-called laws of nature and more specifically of gravity. The great Eric Lathwaite didn't attempt to challenge anyone or anything. What he did do was show that objects in rotational motion can't be explained by classical theory and it's about damn time we all woke up to this fact. And given the weaponization of free energy technology, so this is the, the, the opinion of the author and the countless UFO sightings around the world, anti-gravity technology is almost certainly being utilized and weaponized while we are kept grounded in the global industrial slavery complex. Okay, this is just opinion, but there is of course some truth of it. So I think that you are very curious now to learn that at the science is a, is a new religion. We know it's just I pointed out that this is just uh, things which you can verify when your own eyes. Of course, it is a television, yeah, so it tells the vision. But on the other hand, you see that it's very more um, very very more easy to verify than something of gravity which you cannot see, which you just have to believe. So if this guy is just a wizard or somebody who's using his uh, brain cells, it's just simply up to you. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is not magic because he's not uh, worshipping any pagan god. He's just simply trying to think straight and trying to uh, show people things, which uh, I think that the majority of, of uh, the listeners out there have never, ever encountered. A gyroscope 300 times the weight of a flimsy stand on ice is still able to process if effortlessly. Literally, this is some amazing stuff. Yeah? Even little kids can lift heavy gyros, gyros, anti-gravity. So there must be something wrong in our explanation, which has been given to us by our school indoctrination radio storyorium system, I think. And that is also very interesting, unless they come up with a new idea and a new theory. Yeah. But he didn't get, he didn't won any Nobel Prize. No, he didn't get any Nobel Prize. Yeah, but thanks to this uh, Professor Lathwaite, uh, we have some uh, very strange things that uh, science is not able to explain. Yeah, he also did Christmas lectures. We know that he was not a Bible-believing uh, 
Uh, but that's not the point here. The point is here that he was official person, a professor of electrical engineering at the Imperial College uh, for more than 20 years. So that we have, we can take into consideration um, that he was aware of the scientific belief of his time. Let's uh, point it this way. Let's point it mildly here. Don't want to uh, interpret anything, but this is just uh, so that he was um, delivering theories of the Royal Institution's Christmas lectures. So we know that is a pagan holiday, but nevertheless, his first series, The Engineer in Wonderland of 1966 or 7, was the first to be televised on the new BBC Two channel. Yeah, this is Eric Lathwaite. Yeah. But the Royal Institution didn't accept Lathwaite's irrefutable paper and wanted to stop him from telling the truth in this uh, Christmas lecture the author is claiming. The Royal Institution, etc. Yeah. They refused to believe things because it would go against their ratios to realm. That's it. They would go against the official doctrine of gravity. So this is very interesting stuff. I'd say that maybe in the last part of this session, I think we can make it about 10 minutes or 20 minutes, um, we will go into a little bit of Eric Lathwaite and then we sum it up with a little bit of videos of Eric Lathwaite. So maybe you get curious um, that you have now real visual proof that everything has been said to you out there of so-called science of this world isn't the truth. Hmm? So Eric Robert Lathwaite, born 1921. He was a professor of heavy electrical engineering, a professor of the Royal Institution, and had two sons and died in 1997. He shared his enthusiasm for engineering at every opportunity. He is remembered with affection by students he inspired at Manchester University, where he was a lecturer, etc., etc. Imperial College London, where he was a professor. He enthused other audiences too, both professional colleagues and the general public, but he liked most an audience of young people whom he might inspire to pursue engineering careers. Yeah, the engineer in Wonderland. I think uh, we've done so far on the uh, real facts. Yeah, okay. And let's dive in it. This is my photo of anti-gravity. And you see some pictures, for example, this picture here yeah. of this uh, elderly man. And uh, let's look it up what I have found things. I have tons of links. I don't know if they are still working. And I've got also videos of him. And I think I got this videos by archive.org. I cannot remember it properly because it, I have done it in May, so that it's almost at the, yeah, it's it's uh, half a year ago. Yeah, you see the same, the, the half a year ago exactly. So let me introduce you to Eric Lathwaite and his spinning gyroscopes. Yeah. Uh, sorry, this is a summation. This is the summation. Yeah, this is a very interesting summation. It's also about uh, Saturn symbolic symbolicity, Jesuit rings. Yeah, the Kabbalah, etc. Washington. Yeah. So it's it, it's more like uh, more to our taste, bread, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I just wanted to uh, show you some visual things. Yeah, you see, this is just from 1983. And you don't have uh, any sound of it. Yeah. So he's got here a big weight. And he's swinging it in a circle with one hand. Yeah, so he will not demonstrate the weight of it using a very old fashioned tool.
about four pounds. Now he's bringing it up to 2,500 rotations. And then he wants to lift it uh, five feet up in the air in three seconds. So they are spinning it now at the moment. The screwdriver. Yeah, it sounds like it's not. Now the, the plates are spinning, and he's only lifting it with the remote end with no effort. It's just steering it along his old path, and it's still spinning. Now this is more than 40 pounds. Can you can try that on your own. Now he, he's putting the disc to a stop, apparently. And you can try to lift a 40 pounds over your head. Yeah, and so that was one of his experiments. I don't know if you had uh, any minor sounds on it. But uh, you, you just want to point out that uh, science, you see that they're just putting out some truth and then they mix it up with their lies who are easily all about anti-biblical things. Yeah, so my point, my point actually is you got here an example where you can start if you are going that path of science. Um, um, you can start and you can think for yourself if everything they talk they talk to you and they indoctrinated to you if that is correct or not. And I suppose the answer is quite obvious. So it, it would take too long to uh, to insert it here, a complete example. Maybe I can do that uh, when I edit the video later on. But uh, you see that, uh, yeah, it, it's very interesting if you look it up from the uh, from the viewpoint that they actually claim, oh yeah, this is gravity, this is holding the universe together, when it is actually God which is holding the universe together. Yeah, it's it's something you have to see it in the context to to really think that it's, it it has nothing to do with the things you learn in school. Now that's uh, that that's that's really the problem that uh, you've been easily deceived in school. So easily deceived. Yeah, you you think of your teacher to be the authority. Yeah. So objects in rotation defy defy mainstream physics physics. Physics. Okay. Objects in rotation defy mainstream physics. Yeah, I got a ton of videos. I haven't looked it up. It's about 10 hours long here. You see that uh, you, when would I ever have the time to do? Yeah, but uh, once again, it's 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 so interesting if you look it up that it's also contradicting uh, so many teachings out there. It's uh, it's not funny anymore. It's Absolutely, absolutely not funny anymore. Yeah, we all just been indoctrinated uh, apes, something like this. Yeah. So I, I stop it here and I also uh, look at this another 10, 10 hours, maybe yes, 11 hours. Great. <laughs> yeah, so it's 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 a. Uh, it's enough thing to keep busy with on a on a lazy winter day on a dark day outside yeah it's 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 so interesting when you look all up all the facts here 
then you will easily see that uh, that there is a reason why they don't debate many things. They say that it's everything has been proven and uh, it's an argumentum ad populum. It's the argument about the majority that the majority always is right. And we know from the Bible that the majority always is wrong because the majority is on the broad way. And therefore, I like to close it down with my beloved brother, Brett. So, Brett, I hope that it was a little bit interesting in this session that there you have to really search the Internet for having a non-mainstream opinion about things. And I, I say once again that people are fooling us big time. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, this is a really difficult position that we are in in this world because uh, we are crowded out by this uh, kind of uh, mentality, this indoctrination is just is all encompassing. And <clears throat> I found that uh, you need to take a break from that once in a while and think differently about it because if you uh, go down the road that we are presented, Michael, in in these uh, topics, that uh, oftentimes we're led to a place where you know we really don't have um, a choice. I mean, that's the doctrine of of our enemy is to lead us into a place where we cannot uh, compromise with with that at, 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 any, at any given moment, at any time, um, it just, it takes over. Have you ever heard the expression, you know, you give them an inch and it'll take a mile? Well, that's essentially how this kind of science works, Michael, is once you give it uh, any credibility, it just takes over. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's uh, it's really strange because things just aren't what they seem. Things are not what we thought they were when we're presented with uh, you know these arguments, these um, deep distractions. You know. Uh, putting all these formulas and mathematics in front of us to explain what uh, God did. And instead of just taking the simplicity of, of living our lives and, and, uh, and obeying the Creator's laws, then we have to defy the creator's law in order to observe man's law. So it's it's a really backward way, but that's that's how it works. And this is the system we live in and uh, we didn't have a choice. It just happened to work this way. And uh, well, when you read the Bible, it, it really opens up your mind to the real truth behind it all. So, Michael, uh, yeah, we're really going to get into uh, looks like uh, a very interesting perspective on this science, and I'm looking forward to continuing in this direction and figuring out how simple the Bible really is. And, and really, we don't need to worry too much because uh, God made it all. It's all his, and uh, he's going to come back at his given time. It's not our, uh, it's not what we uh, can control. It's out of our control. That's the point, is we need to let, uh, let the creator guide us into his truth. So, Looking forward to the next session, Michael, and uh, I think that's all I've got, and we'll uh, catch up with you then. God bless, Maranatha.